Bodybuilding, Wikipedia article audio. Bodybuilding is the use of progressive resistance exercise to control and develop one's musculature. An individual who engages in this activity is referred to as a bodybuilder. In professional bodybuilding, bodybuilders appear in lineups and perform specified poses for a panel of judges who rank the competitors based on criteria such as symmetry, muscularity, and conditioning. Bodybuilders prepare for competitions through a combination of intentional dehydration, elimination of non-essential body fat, and carbohydrate loading to achieve maximum vascularity, as well as tanning to accentuate muscular definition. Bodybuilders may use anabolic steroids to build muscles. The winner of the annual IFBB Mr. Olympia contest is generally recognized as the world's top male professional bodybuilder. The title is currently held by Phil Heath, who has won every year from 2011 to 2017. The winner of the women's physique portion of the competition is widely regarded as the world's top female professional bodybuilder. The title is currently held by Juliana Malacarn, who has won every year since 2014. Since 1950, the NABA Universe Championships have been considered the top amateur bodybuilding contests, with notable winners such as Reg Park, Lee Priest, Steve Reeves, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Early History Eugene Sando Stonelifting traditions were practiced in ancient Egypt, Greece, and Tamil Akam. Western weightlifting developed in Europe from 1880 to 1953, with strong men displaying feats of strength for the public and challenging each other. The focus was not on their physique, and they often had large bellies and fatty limbs. Bodybuilding developed in the late 19th century promoted in England by German Eugen Sando, now called the father of bodybuilding. He allowed audiences to enjoy viewing his physique in muscle display performances. Although audiences were thrilled to see a well-developed physique, the men simply displayed their bodies as part of strength demonstrations or wrestling matches. Sando had a stage show built around these displays through his manager, Florence Ziegfeld. The Oscar-winning 1936 musical film The Great Ziegfeld depicts this beginning of modern bodybuilding, when Sando began to display his body for carnivals. Sando was so successful at flexing and posing his physique that he later created several businesses around his fame, and was among the first to market products branded with his name. He was credited with inventing and selling the first exercise equipment for the masses, machine dumbbells, spring pulleys, and tension bands. Even his image was sold by the thousands in cabinet cards and other prints. Sando was a perfect gracilien, a standard of ideal body proportions close to those of ancient Greek and Roman statues. Men were judged by how closely they matched these proportions. Sando organized the first bodybuilding contest on September 14, 1901, called the Great Competition. It was held at the Royal Albert Hall in London. Judged by Sando, Sir Charles Laws, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the contest was a great success and many bodybuilding enthusiasts were turned away due to the overwhelming amount of audience members. The trophy presented to the winner was a gold statue of Sando sculpted by Frederick Pomeroy. The winner was William L. Murray of Nottingham. The silver Sando trophy was presented to second place winner D. Cooper. The bronze Sando trophy, now the most famous of all, was presented to third-place winner A.C. Smythe. In 1950, this same bronze trophy was presented to Steve Reeves for winning the inaugural NABA Mr. Universe. 
It would not resurface again until 1977, when the winner of the IFBB Mr. Olympia contest, Frank Zane, was presented with the bronze trophy, or at least a replica of it. Since then, Mr. Olympia winners have been awarded a replica of the bronze trophy. On January 16, 1904, the first large-scale bodybuilding competition in America took place at Madison Square Garden in New York City. The competition was promoted by Bernard McFadden, the father of physical culture and publisher of the original bodybuilding magazines such as Health and Strength. The winner was Al Trellor, who was declared the most perfectly developed man in the world. Trellor won a $1,000 cash prize, a substantial sum at that time. Two weeks later, Thomas Edison made a film of Trellor's posing routine. Edison had also made two films of Sando a few years before. Those were the first three motion pictures featuring a bodybuilder. In the early 20th century, McFadden and Charles Atlas continued to promote bodybuilding across the world. Alois P. Swoboda was an early pioneer in America. First Large-Scale Bodybuilding Competition Many other important bodybuilders in the early history of bodybuilding prior to 1930 include Earl Lederman, Zishi Breitbart, George Hackenschmidt, Amy Ngmina, George F. Jowett, Finn Haderall, Frank Saldo, Monty Saldo, William Bankier, Lanceston Elliott, Sig Klein, SGT. Alfred Moss, Joe Nordquist, Lionel Strongfort, Gustav Freitensk, Ralph Parkot, and Alan P. Mead. Actor Francis X. Bushman, who was a disciple of Sando, started his career as a bodybuilder and sculptor's model before beginning his famous silent movie career. Bodybuilding became more popular in the 1950s and 1960s with the emergence of strength and gymnastics champions, and the simultaneous popularization of bodybuilding magazines, training principles, nutrition for bulking up and cutting down, the use of protein and other food supplements, and the opportunity to enter physique contests. The number of bodybuilding organizations grew most notably the International Federation of Bodybuilders, founded by Canadian brothers Joe and Ben Weider. Other bodybuilding organizations included the Amateur Athletic Union, National Amateur Bodybuilding Association, and the World Bodybuilding Guild. Consequently, the male-dominated contests grew both in number and in size. Besides the many Mr. Championships, the most prestigious titles were Mr. America, Mr. World, Mr. Universe, Mr. Galaxy, and ultimately Mr. Olympia. Notable Early Bodybuilders During the 1950s, the most famous competing bodybuilders were Bill Pearl, Reg Park, Leroy Colbert, and Clarence Ross. Certain bodybuilders rose to fame thanks to the relatively new medium of television as well as movies. The most notable were Jack Lalanne, Steve Reeves, Reg Park, and Mickey Hargitay. While there were well-known gyms throughout the country during the 1950s, there were still segments of the United States that had no hardcore bodybuilding gyms until the advent of Gold's Gym in the mid-1960s. Finally, the famed Muscle Beach in Santa Monica. California continued its popularity as the place to be for witnessing acrobatic acts, feats of strength, and the like. The 1960s grew more in TV and movie exposure, as bodybuilders were typecast in popular shows and movies. In the 1970s, bodybuilding had major publicity thanks to the appearance of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Franco Columbu, Lou Ferrigno, and others in the 1977 docudrama Pumping Iron. By this time, 
the IFBB dominated the competitive bodybuilding landscape and the Amateur Athletic Union took a back seat. The National Physique Committee was formed in 1981 by Jim Manion, who had just stepped down as chairman of the AAU Physique Committee. The NPC has gone on to become the most successful bodybuilding organization in America, and is the amateur division of the IFBB. The late 1980s and early 1990s saw the decline of AAU-sponsored bodybuilding contests. In 1999, the AAU voted to discontinue its bodybuilding events. This period also saw the rise of anabolic steroids in bodybuilding and many other sports. In bodybuilding lore, this is partly attributed to the rise of mass monsters, beginning with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sergio Oliva and Lou Ferrigno in the late 1960s and early 1970s, and continuing to the present day with Lee Haney, Dorian Yates, Ronnie Coleman and Marcus Rule. Bodybuilders such as Greg Kovacs and Paul DeMeo attained mass and size that were not seen previously, but were not particularly successful at the pro level. At the time of shooting Pumping Iron, Schwarzenegger said that you have to do anything you can to get the advantage in competition. He would later say that he does not regret using anything. 1950s 1960s To combat steroid use and in the hopes of becoming a member of the IOC, the IFBB introduced doping tests for both steroids and other banned substances. Although doping tests occurred, the majority of professional bodybuilders still used anabolic steroids for competition. During the 1970s, the use of anabolic steroids was openly discussed, partly due to the fact they were legal. In the Anabolic Steroid Control Act of 1990, U.S. Congress placed anabolic steroids into Schedule Three of the Controlled Substances Act. In Canada, steroids were added to the Canadian Criminal Code as a Class IV controlled substance. 1970s-1990s In 1990, professional wrestling promoter Vince McMahon announced that he was forming a new bodybuilding organization named the World Bodybuilding Federation. McMahon wanted to bring WWF-style showmanship and bigger prize money to the sport of bodybuilding. A number of IFBB stars were recruited but the roster was never very large, and featured the same athletes competing. The most notable winner and first WBF champion was Gary Stratham. McMahon formally dissolved the WBF in July 1992. Reasons for this reportedly included lack of income from the pay-per-view broadcasts of the contests, slow sales of the WBF's magazine Bodybuilding Lifestyles, and the expense of paying multiple six-figure contracts while producing two TV shows and a monthly magazine. New Organizations In 2003, Joe Weider sold Weider Publications to AMI which owns the National Enquirer. The position of president of the IFBB was filled by Rafael Santangia following the death of Ben Weider in October 2008. In 2004, contest promoter Wayne D'Amelia broke ranks with the IFBB and AMI took over the promotion of the Mr. Olympia contest. Other professional contests emerged in this period such as the Arnold Classic, Knight of Champions, and the European Grand Prix of Bodybuilding. In the early 21st century, patterns of consumption and recreation similar to those of the United States became more widespread in Europe and especially in Eastern Europe following the collapse of the Soviet Union. This resulted in the emergence of whole new populations of bodybuilders emerged from former Eastern Bloc states. Anabolic slash androgenic steroid use In the early 2000s, 
the IFBB was attempting to make bodybuilding an Olympic sport. It obtained full IOC membership in 2000 and was attempting to get approved as a demonstration event at the Olympics, which would hopefully lead to it being added as a full contest. This did not happen and Olympic recognition for bodybuilding remains controversial, since many argue that bodybuilding is not a sport. In the modern bodybuilding industry, the term professional generally means a bodybuilder who has won qualifying competitions as an amateur and has earned a pro card from their respective organization. Professionals earn the right to compete in competitions that include monetary prizes. A pro card also prohibits the athlete from competing in federations other than the one from which they have received the pro card. Depending on the level of success, these bodybuilders may receive monetary compensation from sponsors, much like athletes in other sports. Due to the growing concerns of the high cost, health consequences, and illegal nature of some steroids, many organizations have formed in response and have deemed themselves natural bodybuilding competitions. In addition to the concerns noted, Many promoters of bodybuilding have sought to shed the freakish perception that the general public has of bodybuilding and have successfully introduced a more mainstream audience to the sport of bodybuilding by including competitors whose physiques appear much more attainable and realistic. In natural contests, the testing protocol ranges among organizations from lie detectors to urinalysis. Penalties also range from organization to organization from suspensions to strict bans from competition. It is also important to note that natural organizations also have their own list of banned substances and it is important to refer to each organization's website for more information about which substances are banned from competition. There are many natural bodybuilding organizations. Some of the larger ones include Muscle Mania, Ultimate Fitness Events, INBF slash WNBF, and INBA slash PNBA. These organizations either have American or worldwide presence and are not limited to the country in which they are headquartered. Other notable natural bodybuilding organization include the National Physique Committee and the North American Natural Bodybuilding Federation. NPC competitions screen competitors using ineffective lie detector tests to ensure fair practices. Such tests are very error-prone, and some competitors are not even tested. World Bodybuilding Federation This is how the NPC differs from the NANV. The NANV takes a more direct approach by taking urine samples from all competitors that are tested for steroids and any other substances on the banned list. The NANV also differs from the NPC when it comes to judging. The criteria of certain poses differs from organization to organization. The NANV even has an elevated calf pose which is unique for their competitions. 20 hundreds. The first U.S. Women's National Physique Championship, promoted by Henry McGee and held in Canton, Ohio in 1978, is generally regarded as the first true female bodybuilding contest that is, the first contest where the entrants were judged solely on muscularity. In 1980, the first Ms. Olympia, the most prestigious contest for professionals, was held. The first winner was Rachel McClish, who had also won the NPC's USA Championship earlier in the year. The contest was a major turning point for female bodybuilding. McClish inspired many future competitors to start training and competing. In 1985, a movie called Pumping Iron 2, The Women was released. It documented the preparation of several women for the 1983 Caesars Palace World Cup Championship. Competitors prominently featured in the film were Chris Alexander, Lori Bowen, Lydia Cheng, Carla Dunlap, 
Bev Francis and McClish. At the time, Francis was actually a power lifter, though she soon made a successful transition to bodybuilding, becoming one of the leading competitors of the late 1980s and early 1990s. Strength training through weights or elastic slash hydraulic resistance, specialized nutrition, incorporating extra protein and supplements when necessary, adequate rest, including sleep and recuperation between workouts. In recent years, the related areas of fitness and figure competition have increased in popularity, surpassing that of female bodybuilding, and have provided an alternative for women who choose not to develop the level of muscularity necessary for bodybuilding. McClish would closely resemble what is thought of today as a fitness and figure competitor, instead of what is now considered a female bodybuilder. Fitness competitions also have a gymnastic element to them. A study by the Clinical Journal of Sport Medicine found that female bodybuilders who are taking anabolic steroids are more likely to have qualified for substance dependence disorder and have been diagnosed with a psychiatric illness and have a history of sexual abuse. E. Will McConnor competed in the 2011 NPC Armbrust Pro Gym Warrior Classic Championships in Loveland, Colorado at the age of 75 years and 349 days. In competitive bodybuilding, bodybuilders aspire to develop and maintain an aesthetically pleasing body and balanced physique. In prejudging, competitors do a series of mandatory poses, the front lat spread, rear lat spread, front double biceps, back double biceps, side chest, side triceps, most muscular, and the thigh abdominal. Each competitor also performs a routine to display their physique. A pose down is usually held at the end of a posing round, while judges are finishing their scoring. Bodybuilders spend a lot of time practicing their posing in mirrors. Olympic Sport Discussion Areas Professional bodybuilding Natural bodybuilding In contrast to strongman or power lifting competitions, where physical strength is important, or to Olympic weightlifting, where the main point is equally split between strength and technique, bodybuilding competitions typically emphasize condition, size, and symmetry. Different organizations emphasize particular aspects of competition, and sometimes have different categories in which to compete. The general strategy adopted by most present-day competitive bodybuilders is to make muscle gains for most of the year and, approximately 12-14 weeks from competition, attempt to lose body fat. The bulking phase entails remaining in a net positive energy balance. The amount of a surplus in which a person remains is based on the person's goals, as a bigger surplus and longer bulking phase will create more fat tissue. The surplus of calories relative to one's energy balance will ensure that muscles remain in a state of growth. The cutting phase entails remaining in a net negative energy balance. The main goal of cutting is to oxidize fat while preserving as much muscle as possible. The larger the calorie deficit, the faster one will lose weight. However, a large calorie deficit will also create the risk of losing muscle tissue. The precise effectiveness of the cutting and bulking strategy is unknown, with only limited observational case studies on the subject. No studies involving precise hypercaloric feeding combined with resistance exercise have been conducted. Many non-competitive bodybuilders choose not to adopt the conventional strategy, as it often results in significant unwanted fat gain during the bulking phase. The attempt to increase muscle mass in one's body without any gain in fat is called clean bulking. 
competitive bodybuilders focus their efforts to achieve a peak appearance during a brief competition season. Clean bulking takes longer and is a more refined approach to achieving the body fat and muscle mass percentage a person is looking for. A common tactic for keeping fat low and muscle mass high would be to have higher calorie and lower calorie days to reach a balance of gain and loss. Many clean bulk diets start off with a moderate amount of carbs, moderate amount of protein, and a decently low amount of fats. Gaining lean muscle means going for leaner cuts of meat, like flank steaks and fillets, chicken, and, of course, fish, says White. Enjoy your meat with some starch, rice, beans, quinoa, whole grain couscous, or sweet potato, for example. To maintain a clean bulk it is important to reach your calorie goals every day. Macronutrient goals will be different for each person, but, it is ideal to get as close as possible. Dirty bulking is the process of eating at a caloric surplus, without finding the exact number of macronutrients. Weightlifters who are attempting to gain mass quickly often choose to use the dirty bulk method. In the week leading up to a contest, Bodybuilders may decrease their consumption of water, sodium, and carbohydrates, the former two to alter how water is retained by the body and the latter to reduce glycogen in the muscle. The day before the show, water is removed from the diet, and diuretics may be introduced, while carbohydrate loading is undertaken to increase the size of the muscles through replenishment of their glycogen. The goal is to maximize leanness and increase the visibility of veins, or vascularity. The appearance of veins is further enhanced immediately before appearing on stage by darkening the skin through tanning products and applying oils to the skin to increase shine. Some competitors will eat sugar-rich foods to increase the visibility of their veins. A final step is the use of weights to fill the muscles with blood and further increase their size. Female Bodybuilding Bodybuilders use three main strategies to maximize muscle hypertrophy. Bodybuilders often shorten these three steps into the well-known motto Eat clean, train hard, sleep well. Weight training causes micro-tears to the muscles being trained. This is generally known as microtrauma. These micro tears in the muscle contribute to the soreness felt after exercise, called delayed onset muscle soreness. It is the repair to these micro trauma that result in muscle growth. Normally, this soreness becomes most apparent a day or two after a workout. However, as muscles become adapted to the exercises, Soreness tends to decrease. Competition Preparations Cutting and bulking Weight training aims to build muscle by prompting two different types of hypertrophy, sarcoplasmic and myofibrillar. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy leads to larger muscles and so is favored by bodybuilders more than myofibrillar hypertrophy which builds athletic strength. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is triggered by increasing repetitions, whereas myofibrillar hypertrophy is triggered by lifting heavier weight. In either case, there is an increase in size and strength of the muscles. However, the emphasis is different. Many trainees like to cycle between the two methods in order to prevent the body from adapting, possibly emphasizing whichever method more suits their goals. I.e. a bodybuilder will use sarcoplasmic hypertrophy most of the time, but may change to myofibrillar hypertrophy temporarily in order to move past a plateau. However, no real evidence has been provided to show that trainees ever reach this plateau, and rather was more of a hype created from muscular confusion.
The high levels of muscle growth and repair achieved by bodybuilders require a specialized diet. Generally speaking, bodybuilders require more calories than the average person of the same weight to provide the protein and energy requirements needed to support their training and increase muscle mass. A sub-maintenance level of food energy is combined with cardiovascular exercise to lose body fat in preparation for a contest. The ratios of calories from carbohydrates, proteins, and fats vary depending on the goals of the bodybuilder. Carbohydrates play an important role for bodybuilders. They give the body energy to deal with the rigors of training and recovery. Carbohydrates also promote secretion of insulin, a hormone enabling cells to get the glucose they need. Insulin also carries amino acids into cells and promotes protein synthesis. Insulin has steroid-like effects in terms of muscle gains. It is impossible to promote protein synthesis without the existence of insulin which means that without ingesting carbohydrates or protein which also induces the release of insulin it is impossible to add muscle mass. Bodybuilders seek out low glycemic polysaccharides and other slowly digesting carbohydrates, which release energy in a more stable fashion than high glycemic sugars and starches. This is important as high glycemic carbohydrates cause a sharp insulin response which places the body in a state where it is likely to store additional food energy as fat. However, bodybuilders frequently do ingest some quickly digesting sugars after a workout. This may help to replenish glycogen stored within the muscle, and to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. The motor proteins actin and myosin generate the forces exerted by contracting muscles. Current advice says that bodybuilders should consume 25-30% of protein per total calorie intake to further their goal of maintaining and improving their body composition. This is a widely debated topic, with many arguing that 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight per day is ideal, some suggesting that less is sufficient, while others recommending 1.5, 2, or more. It is believed that protein needs to be consumed frequently throughout the day, especially during slash after a workout, and before sleep. There is also some debate concerning the best type of protein to take. Chicken, turkey, beef, pork, fish, eggs and dairy foods are high in protein, as are some nuts, seeds, beans, and lentils. Casein or whey are often used to supplement the diet with additional protein. Whey protein is the type of protein contained in many popular brands of protein supplements, and is preferred by many bodybuilders because of its high biological value and quick absorption rates. However, whey has a bigger effect than casein on insulin levels. Whey triggers about double the amount of insulin release. That effect is somewhat overcome by combining casein and whey. Bodybuilders are usually thought to require protein with a higher BV than that of soy, which is additionally avoided due to its claimed estrogenic properties. Still, some nutrition experts believe that soy, flax seeds, and many other plants that contain the weak estrogen-like compounds or phytoestrogens can be used beneficially as phytoestrogens compete with estrogens for receptor sites in the male body and can block its actions. This can also include some inhibition of pituitary functions while stimulating the P450 system in the liver to more actively process and excrete excess estrogen. Cortisol decreases amino acid uptake by muscle, and inhibits protein synthesis. Clean bulking Contrary to certain rumors that animal-based protein is more suitable to trigger muscle growth than plant-based protein, a study by Mangano ETAL could not provide any evidence for this. In contrast, 
if combined properly plant-based protein even has a higher biological quality. A combination of one part wheat protein and two parts soy protein has thus been favored by many bodybuilders. Some bodybuilders, such as Patrick Babumian and Robert Cheek, follow a strict vegan diet. Bodybuilders often split their food intake for the day into five to seven meals of roughly equal nutritional content and attempt to eat at regular intervals. This method can serve two purposes, to limit overindulging in the cutting phase, and to physically allow for the consumption of large volumes of food during the bulking phase. Contrary to popular belief, eating more frequently does not increase basal metabolic rate when compared to the traditional three meals a day. While food does have a metabolic cost to digest, absorb, and store, called the thermic effect of food, it depends on the quantity and type of food, not how the food is spread across the meals of the day. Well-controlled studies using whole body calorimetry and doubly labeled water have demonstrated that there is no metabolic advantage to eating more frequently. The important role of nutrition in building muscle and losing fat means bodybuilders may consume a wide variety of dietary supplements. Various products are used in an attempt to augment muscle size, increase the rate of fat loss, improve joint health, increase natural testosterone production, enhance training performance and prevent potential nutrient deficiencies. There are three major macronutrients that the human body needs in order for muscle building. The major nutrients protein, carbohydrate, and fat provide the body with energy. Some bodybuilders use drugs such as anabolic steroids and precursor substances such as prohormones to increase muscle hypertrophy. Anabolic steroids cause muscle hypertrophy of both types of muscle fibers caused likely by an increased synthesis of muscle proteins and are accompanied with undesired side effects including hepatotoxicity, gynecomastia, acne, the early onset of male pattern baldness and a decline in the body's own testosterone production, which can cause testicular atrophy. Other performance-enhancing substances used by competitive bodybuilders include human growth hormone, which can cause acromegaly. Muscle growth is more difficult to achieve in older adults than younger adults because of biological aging, which leads to many metabolic changes detrimental to muscle growth, for instance, by diminishing growth hormone and testosterone. Some recent clinical studies have shown that low-dose HGH treatment for adults with HGH deficiency changes the body composition by increasing muscle mass, decreasing fat mass, increasing bone density and muscle strength, improves cardiovascular parameters, and affects the quality of life without significant side effects. A recent trend in bodybuilding is to inject synthol into muscles to create larger bulges, or injecting PMMA into muscles to shape them. Use of PMMA to shape muscles is prohibited in the United States. Although muscle stimulation occurs in the gym when lifting weights, muscle growth occurs afterward during rest. Without adequate rest and sleep, muscles do not have an opportunity to recover and build. About 8 hours of sleep a night is desirable for the bodybuilder to be refreshed, although this varies from person to person. Additionally, many athletes find a daytime nap further increases their body's ability to build muscles. Some individual bodybuilders add a massage sometimes by professional masseuse, massager, or masseur at the end of each workout to their routine as a method of recovering. Overtraining occurs when a bodybuilder has trained to the point where his workload exceeds his recovery capacity. There are many reasons that overtraining occurs, including lack of adequate nutrition, 
lack of recovery time between workouts, insufficient sleep, and training at a high intensity for too long. Training at a high intensity too frequently also stimulates the central nervous system and can result in a hyperadrenergic state that interferes with sleep patterns. To avoid overtraining, intense frequent training must be met with at least an equal amount of purposeful recovery. Timely provision of carbohydrates, proteins, and various micronutrients such as vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, even nutritional supplements are acutely critical. A mental disorder known as bigorexia may be held accountable of some people overtraining. Sufferers feel as if they are never big enough or muscular enough. This therefore forces them to overtrain in order to try and reach this goal physique. It has been argued that overtraining can be beneficial. One article published by Muscle and Fitness magazine stated that you can overtrain for big gains. It suggested that if one is planning a restful holiday and they do not wish to inhibit their bodybuilding lifestyle too much, they should overtrain before taking the holiday, so the body can rest easily and recuperate and grow. Overtraining can be used advantageously, as when a bodybuilder is purposely overtrained for a brief period of time to supercompensate during a regeneration phase. These are known as shock microcycles and were a key training technique used by Soviet athletes. Site enhancement oil, often called santal or synthol, refers to oils injected into muscles to increase the size or change the shape. Some bodybuilders, particularly at the professional level, inject their muscles with such mixtures to mimic the appearance of developed muscle where it may otherwise be disproportionate or lagging. This is known as fluffing. Synthol is 85% oil, 7.5% lidocaine, and 7.5% alcohol. It is not restricted, and many brands are available on the internet. The use of injected oil to enhance muscle appearance is common among bodybuilders, despite the fact that synthol can cause pulmonary embolisms, nerve damage, infections, sclerosing lipogranuloma, stroke, and the formation of oil-filled granulomas, cysts or ulcers in the muscle. Rare cases might require surgical intervention to avoid further damage to the muscle and slash or to prevent loss of life. Dirty bulking Pre-competition Sesame oil is often used in such mixtures, which can cause allergic reactions such as vasculitis. As the injected muscle is not actually well developed, it might droop under gravity. Muscle growth Weight training Nutrition Carbohydrates Protein Meals Dietary supplements Performance enhancing substances Rest Overtraining Injecting oil into muscles